Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very special guest with us. It's Mark Amell. And Mark Amell, you know, focuses on business and he helps businesses grow. And he came out with amazing tools that he was telling me prior to the show. He has 30 different tools and techniques on ways for businesses to grow. And he has programs out there that are free for people to dive into, to learn how to grow their business and not get scammed by all these other big marketing companies out there that are looking to take your money, but you don't get the results you want. So Mark's going to take it away. He's going to tell us a little about himself and he's going to show you how you could grow your business. So Mark, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do, because this is really exciting. Well, I started out as a Air Force officer and I brought the first artificial intelligence program to the military. And the way I use AI is to understand what Google does, why they do it. So all my tools are Google friendly so that they don't come back and they're happy to support you and put you on page one. Mm -hmm. So six years ago, I met a person that had to sell his business and found out it wasn't worth anything. Oh, wow. So I started down the I started down the path of finding out why I worked with business brokers and then ended up spending five years and $70,000 testing software, working with gurus around the world. Because I, I wanted to bring a marketing package to small businesses that wouldn't have to go through that. And yeah. I myself am a small business. I've worked out of the house now 35 years before. Before the pandemic, I was a hermit. Now I'm socially responsible, so I'm moving up uh, the path. But what I've done is I just released in January this marketing company. Um, I've tested, over those five years, I've tested different techniques that were very effective in their own way. But marketing is a, a complete package. And... For instance, if you people, a lot of people sell CRMs, customer retention modules, which is great to stay in touch with your customers, but you get this CRM and then they don't tell you, how do you put new people into it? Yeah. So there's no, there's no lead generations. So the, the simple path, it's not particularly simple is you have to identify your target. Right. You, there's, um, Ocean, there's a blue ocean and a red ocean and red ocean is jumping up and down with a sign on New Year's Eve in Times Square, you know, but a blue ocean is having a very special niche, but describing it so you don't have any competition. Right. Okay. So in, for my company, I say I'm, I'm a digital marketing company that I have over 30 ways to help you grow your business. So not everybody can say that. Right. So you try to focus on what your niche is and taking it further. I'm going after accountants this quarter. We're going to market totally everything about my posts. Everything is going to be about accountants. So we'll go over another niche, you know, the keywords you use, the vocabulary that you use because you want to resonate with it. You don't, yeah. want to, you don't want to come up and say in your emails that I can help you grow your business, you know, and it's going to get deleted before they even finish reading the sentence. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's a process, but I guess to kind of a, a big overview is you define your niche, you get your SEO set up and SEO search engine optimization is so Google can find you and actually look at what you have. Right. And then you set up your steps. You need lead generation. Lead generation goes into a sales funnel. And the sales funnel then goes to your calendar or a phone call, or if it's less than a couple hundred dollars, maybe just to a, an online store. Right. And then what you want to do is do the follow-up into your CRM. Right. Okay. What's interesting is 86% of small businesses that struggle use one or two marketing techniques to fill that sales funnel if they have one. 
Mm-hmm. But 90% of million dollar small businesses use 10 or more techniques. Okay. So what we have is we have, let's say, 10 lead generation techniques in, you know, the list of them, web scrapers, um, LinkedIn, Sales Navigator, Facebook, all these different people that are products that get you leads, you put them into the sales funnel and you take them through a six step because they drop out, that's fine. But if they're still hanging out, you give them more information. But by the time they're ready to actually talk to you, they want to buy from you. So we take the sales, the sales, salesy talk out of the equation We just make it a lay down where somebody says, okay, how do I order this? I have just a couple questions. And that way, those busy owners that are small businesses don't have to spend the day on the phone. Right. And a lot of it, I call it kind of like almost reverse AI. Mm -hmm. Because you want to understand that person. You want to get that person to understand and trust you. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times what I do is I use landing pages because I can be just that one topic they go to. They don't get more confused. I'm like, if you want some more information, here's my calendar. Um, Instead of sending them to the website where they're, they're all confused, I've seen websites that, you know, after looking through them for 10 minutes, because I was asked to give a review of it, I still right. don't understand what they did. you know if in this society you know it has to work on a cell phone um it has to get grab that person's attention in two seconds otherwise they're looking at the next one because they got a list of 10 different things they got and I, I feel like in today's society, our retention span has gotten even smaller. You know, most people do not want to be on, you know, they don't they don't like reading anymore. So they need to know exactly what you're talking about within a, a three, no more. This is high, five second span. You really, it's the three second span. You want to grab their attention because people don't like to read and they don't like to research and they don't, it's, it's a go-go society. So like you said, I think that's a great idea because you you go into websites, people are, a lot of people are talented in so many different ways. They have a business and they have so many different things to offer, but then you go on the website and they have everything on the, on their webpage. And the person, like you said, is totally confused. It's like, you know, overwhelmed with info. And I think that makes a person want to click off right away. But I like the idea how you have them funnel right to a landing page where it's brief, blunt, to the point, and then you have your calendar where you could personally explain it to them. I think that's really an excellent idea. The other thing that I like to do on a landing page is to put um, a short video. They say there's 86% more conversion. And okay. I, can put a, I can put a video of me. And um, since I'm an animal lover, I always like to put my dogs on there somewhere. I just feel out <laughs> So you don't really have to spend like a lot of money on a video. You could do a simple video, really explain, you know, the point of whatever you're trying to explain, you know, on that landing page. And that will work just as well. And the conversion rate will be just as high because people spend a lot of money trying to make these videos. So you can make these videos yourself, I guess. Yeah. What the thing is to do your video is get your, write it out, like your first sentence. You can outline what you want to cover. But you want to grab that first five seconds, like using the YouTube rules, they've Mm -hmm. got five seconds before they click off your ad. So first five seconds, tell them what it is, what you're, you know, then go into a quick overview, tell them about you and then into more details. And then if they're still watching it, they, they see all of it, but um, you can do it right with your tele, with your phone record it and then put it on, convert it and put it onto your landing page. It's not, it doesn't have to be really difficult. You have to have the right lighting and you have, yeah. to, you have to have a good sound. Mm-hmm. Um, and what I tell people that, okay, they get nervous about going in front of video, create a video. 
I said, just put it in your mind. It's going to take you 20 times to get the right video. Yeah. If you're nervous and you mess up the first three, you go like, okay, I only got, I got 17 left. I can play with. (laughs) Don't, you know, don't go in. You got like, I'm going to make a two minute video. I got 20 minutes and your spouse is getting in the car with the kids and you're trying to finish it up. (laughs) It's not going to (laughs) work. You know, get up early. Um, have your coffee, walk around the block and you right. know, say, okay, this is what I'm thinking about. This is how I want to present it. And yeah. just don't worry about it if it takes you 10 times. I think my first one took me 13 times before I right. was happy with it. But there's also, if you want to do it on your computer yourself, there's a product called Loom that I love. It'll record, oh, yeah. record your sound and your voice. You know, Think about things like, you know, your background, you know, do mm-hmm. you want to, do you want to record that on your background, but also think about, you don't want to do, you can break it into pieces, but you don't want to do it in like wearing this shirt next. I do the next piece the next day and I got a green shirt on, or I, I want to get a haircut, you know, that's kind of <laughs> weird. So but there's there's little things that I, I help. I say su- submit me the link to your video. I'll be glad to give you some pointers. Right. And it's the same way with email. People have got short attention span. Some guy said, Oh yeah, I spent all day. I created this really nice email. Well, it was four pages long. <laughs> That's not gonna quite work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I wrote it in like half a page. I put some bullet points in there so that they could quickly look at it in the headline. Right. The subject line is important, but also the first line of your email also gets shown in their, in their email when they get their emails and they're looking to see what to click on. Okay. So so you really got two lines to put some good data on it to get their attention to open it. So have it short and sweet, but then there's also um, cold email. If you want to buy a list, I spent three years building a um, cold email machine. I can spend five, I can send out 500 cold emails an hour. Oh, wow. So, but it did take a long time to get it warmed up to get the right, you know, it depends on a lot of technical stuff, but in order to get it. So I always tell people, go to Google, open up a workspace and get a a fresh domain, get a fresh Gmail account, open up the workspace with that business profile. Yeah. Let them warm up for a couple of weeks before you start sending them out. But open up three of them. You know, if, if the one crashes and burns, it doesn't kill you. But if you start sending out with your main email address and your right. your email gets blacklisted, you're, nobody can email you then after that. Yeah. So it's, you know, and then, you know, we come to the, people want to go, I want to do ads. And I'm like, well, do you have $10,000 a month to do some ads? Because you've got to compete with your competition. Right. So what I tell people to do is let's do, I have a procedure for posts like there's bonding post. Hey, I'm a, I work out of my home too. You know, I love Mm -hmm. puppies, you know, bonding posts and then educational posts, give them something of value. Yeah. You know, I can tell like some of these things that passed along, hopefully in this, you know, the podcast. Right. Third one is an offer that's so good that they can't say no. Right. Yeah. Risk out of it. You know, I've, I've been doing this for a while. I understand this. I want to, I want to give you this value and here's my guarantee. Right. So think about something that they'd be, Hey, wait a minute. I'd be foolish to say no, but you know, put that out. But those three different types of posts Mm -hmm. in LinkedIn, the magic number is 23. So right. if you do 23 over a four week period, you are going to start getting some traction. Right. 
And then it's a matter of following up. Somebody liked your post, send them back saying, thank you for liking my post. Right. Make that connection. It's, I tested some of my lead generation softwares and I had 50 leads a day and they were just falling on the floor. I didn't have time to follow up. So I turned them off, but right. that's what can happen. You want to, you might as well put your money to good use. Exactly. Exactly. I feel like also like people just write stuff, but I think in our society, people have to really learn or even maybe hire somebody or even get a software because they have software now. They When they write, they should write in a CEO, CEO way and optimize it, what they write. So it gets ranked high on Google. How do you feel about that? I think you should use the keywords. Um, yeah. And that's what they pick out. But it also has to do with what I do for all my customers. We have a theme of the month. Mm -hmm. So say um, you're a real estate agent and uh, the fall is leaves. I say, tell real estate agents, write to everybody you've ever talked to about increasing the asset, their home's an asset. Tell them like to that. clean out the leaves in their gutter so that it doesn't damage over the winter. Right? I like that. Yeah. So you're staying in and maybe they're not going to buy a house for five years, but they're also, pe they know people that are moving all the time. Right. So I recommend you. But what I do is I have that month of September is going to be leaves all right, for a real estate agent. So all their posts are going to be about leaves, damage could cause, how having a fixed up gutters around your house increases the value of your house. Yeah. All those posts are going to be about leaves because then you've got that group of keywords. Google says, hey, you're everywhere. You know, right. I like that. So and then we come to things like, yeah, there's tools like ChatGPT and it says, okay, go ahead and write me a blog post. You know, and ChatGPT is created from programmers right mm -hmm. and they use yeah. databases and they look up things and they pull it but yeah. um it doesn't mean they're the real person it doesn't mean that it's in your voice exactly and there's a lot of tools out there that can tell you that chat gpt wrote this yeah and google uses those tools to take away brownie points so you got mm -hmm. You got 10 brownie points for writing a nice blog and you lose 15 because you cheated. Right. Well, so, so-called cheated. Yeah. But, um, You can use those tools like ChatGPT. Give me an outline. Give me, right. you know, go ahead and refresh it. Give me three articles back and let you get started with writing. There's nothing wrong with that. And it's exactly. a lady in um, California I talked to, she said, I wanted to use chat GPT because my English is, it isn't, I don't feel it's like professional because I grew up in Quebec speaking French. Right. So I was like, okay, what happens if you put these articles from chat GPT in there and then they talk to you, they're mm -hmm. going to think there's going to be a disconnect. You're already hurting your trust. Yeah. Because what we're trying to do in marketing is that customer journey, but we're trying to build trust. Yeah. Because people have to judge you on something, okay? Yes. Maybe when I talk to somebody, I don't like blue. You know, I do like blue, but, you know. <laughs> you know, you look at, you you have to look at something, you know, right. to build that trust. You've got to get good at listening to people and what they're, what they're not telling you, what they mean to tell you. Exactly. So exactly. in marketing, it's, it's all about building that trust, getting that person on the phone and keeping that trust. You know, it's, it's like in the first five minutes, if you ask for the credit card, you know, it's probably not going to work. Exactly. Exactly. You know, it's, it's more about how you can help. And one of the first things I do on my project is I list um, 10 pain points. What's keeping that customer up at night? What can't yeah. they solve? I deal with a lot of small businesses. You know, they're, I'm not getting leads in, you know, I need more business. How am I going to do that? Right. Until you're, 
you wait until your money's out, it's going to be that much harder, right? Oh, yeah. You don't plan for it. So one of the things I do is I call it a strategic marketing plan. You know, I go in and I create a plan and these are the steps. This is how long whatever is going to take. Yeah. And one of the first things I do is I set up their local SEO. Most people probably don't realize there's 50 to 70 different search directories, local listings in your local area. Right. And Google goes in to read them and says, okay, most of this information is missing. You've got road spelled R-O-A-D one place, R-D the next place. It's not going to show your information because it doesn't know which one's true. Right. So we get a tool that goes in and updates that. But SEO takes three months to break even as a mm -hmm. general rule, six months to peak. But if you don't keep maintaining it in nine months, it's dead. Right. So people, you know, people don't realize that they need to hire a company and put it into the plan that they're going to update new pictures. You know, mm -hmm. they're going to update new descriptions every month in order right. to keep that SEO alive. Right. I've talked to a lot of people that had, you know, bought SEO for $3,500 a month and they said, oh yeah, it's great. You know, three months in we're, we're breaking even, it's doing good six months, you know, it's doing real well. And then they call me at nine month point and say it died. What happened? <laughs> it's like, I could have told you that. <laughs> yeah. You know, it just, that's my area. You know, I, yeah. I can't build a house you know, mm -hmm. but this is my area. And I'd like to tell a short story, if you don't mind. Oh, uh, of course. Henry Ford was brought into court by his board and they wanted to throw Henry Ford out of the company, said he didn't know enough about what was going on. Right. So listening to these questions for a while, he said, judge, I've got a list. I've got a board across my desk with switches on. And if I need answers to any of those questions i know what switch to flip get the right person in there so mm -hmm. judge threw it out of case the case out of court and it basically says to me surround people surround yourself with people that know you more than you do about a different I, area i think that's a great idea and there's too many people that start out a small business that try to do everything themselves and they find that after a short while, that list grows of stuff that they don't know or don't want to do. Yeah. So I, I try to encourage people to, you know, I want to help them get there. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens if a person, you know, they're a small business, but they're unlimited funds and they do need that, that, that surrounding group of people. They do, you know, they can't do everything by themselves and, you know, their strengths might be in one area, like they might have cre creativity and they might be good in certain things, but then they lack the business end and they lack certain things, and, but you're on a limited budget. So what do you do when you're in, in that spot where you only have X amount of money to spend but yet you you know that you need the extra help. You have to spend it wisely. And that's why I do a strategic plan. Like my marketing starts out inexpensive. I have a, a weekly marketing class for 197 a month. And I teach you everything about marketing. But I also have a group of financial planners, HR people, if you've got people. Mm -hmm. I've got a lot of people on my team that, I have come into the class to teach, but I can also set up one-on-ones that will talk to you free for an hour and make sure you're heading in the right direction. Right. So it's yeah. one of the things that I found by spending that five years going down all these rabbit holes that yeah. most people have probably gone down. Um, right. It's getting the people that have the right heart, you know, they want to help people. They still have to pay their bills. But they do, you know, pro bono work to help yeah. people all the time. It just, you have to, you may have to wait a couple of weeks for it. It's not going to be pick them up on the phone. Yeah. 
Now, I know a lot of businesses, like especially during COVID, that, you know, their businesses crashed. And when COVID, you know, got better and people started coming out again, a lot of people didn't have their businesses and they had to start from scratch again. And it was hard because, you know, it they 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 had so many expenses and it takes a while to get those businesses go, running up. Do you have any suggestions for those type of people who lost their Ethan during COVID and now they're they're starting from scratch all over again? How they how they can become a successful business and get everything going in the right direction? Yeah, hopefully they've kept their list of customers. Mm -hmm. The goal is in the customers. Contact right. them back in. You know, COVID hit me hard. I'm back in business. Um, how have you been doing? You know, you right. can't. Are you able to give me another chance? Because that, that list is gold. The yeah. other thing is start out small. I mean, you can, right. if you've got time, there's um, there's a group called alignable.com that does a lot of one-on-ones. It's speed mm -hmm. dating for businesses. You know, you can yeah. get on there and you got seven minutes to meet somebody. Go to those three times a day if you've got time. Right. And, and do that. Have a come, come to my free marketing class, you know, and learn some about marketing. Right. Uh, I'm always up for a one-on-one -on -one call and try to give you some direction. But the first thing I would, you know, I keep saying first thing, but I would definitely look at all the people that they have talked to and how are you going to adjust? If they had talked to me before going into it, you know, we yeah. would change the direction on what you're offering. Right. Okay. But now that you're out, think about what is your, um, what type of customer do you most prefer? Which ones, right. which ones are profitable? Which ones are going to help you get out? The people that you've helped before ask for review. I mean, reviews are important when you're starting out because oh, yeah. you don't know somebody, they're going to look at a review, but it's, it's not only getting the review, it's how you respond to that review. You know, right. do you take the time to say thank you? You know, I remember you coming into my store. Um, if somebody has a bad experience saying, you know, I'm sorry that happened, how can I make it up to you? Right. So it's it's looking at reviews every day and responding. And if you have a few bad reviews, people are going to look at that response. You know, I saw one that the custom, the person that wrote the review was pretty critical, overly yeah. critical, I think. But the the owner came back and slammed the person. I'm like, oh. I'm like, I would never go there because I wouldn't want to talk to the owner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they you, say yeah. sometimes. I'm sorry. I was going to just say they say sometimes bad reviews sometimes could work in a positive sense. It definitely can. And it's all on how you handle it. You know, it's it's anything. It's we all had stories. We've all had tragedies in our lives. And it's how you handle it and how you come out of it that means a lot. I can tell you down here we have hurricanes in Florida and one time I had five feet of water in my house. And oh, wow. By the time it receded, I had black mold from floor to ceiling. So when I got out of there, I had my four dogs, my two computers, and my shirt on my back. And that was literally it. The rest oh, of it wow. bulldozed. But it's it's how you come out and how, you know, I had my computers. I had my customer list. I contacted everybody and said, I'm going to be a little slow on responding. Yeah, you know, so and it was great. You know, it turned around and you come out stronger, but it's all that reaction. Yeah. And I think that you made a good point. Like that that gentleman just slammed the customer, but if if you know, the way you handle it, if you say it in a nice way, I think people won't won't be as critical and and won't be as skeptical you know when it, it, i think it's all how you respond as the owner you know, as the person who runs the business yeah and marketing it's all trust you know building trust and building trust that you don't even get to see the person you know until it's moved down the chain a little bit yeah 
what are some ways like um some you know some some strong ways people could build trust with with uh, potential customers because a lot of people when they're when they're trying to build a business i think you know it's it they forget the how to build the trust factor it's not all about selling and like you said grabbing the credit card how do you build that trust factor you talk to them about what their pain point is, okay? Because right now in marketing, unless you sell them to the top 1%, you're not going to sell a shiny chandelier, right? Right. What you're going to do is you're going to talk to them about what keeps you up at night, what is bothering you, what what having, what projects have you had on your list for a month because you don't have time to get to it. Right. What can I do to help you experience explain to me what you do and right. how I can help. It's, you know, it, it's the, it's a sense of be interested in the other person. Don't try to be interesting to them. Right. I watched a webinar the other day and it, it looked like it was going to be interesting, but the first half hour, the lady talked about how great she was. <laughs> And I turned it off after half an hour. It was like, I'm not going to yeah. listen anymore. And yeah. So when you when you do get a chance in the emails, when you set up your video, you know, talk about, I've got, I've had, you know, for accounting wise, you know, I tell them, I said, right now, the accounts should be going out to everybody they've done taxes before, say they're still alive, but also mm-hmm. remind them that marketing is a tax deduction. So if you're going to pay taxes next year, right, you could invest so much money. There's a lot of things, equipment for your business, that if mm-hmm. you're going to pay taxes on that, instead of paying taxes, what are your tax deductible investments? Right. That money's going to go out either way. Exactly. So we're on the, for working for accountants, we're putting together a a package of what's tax deductible. How can you include, increase your business, you know, before you start spending all your money for the holidays, you know, what, what can you invest in your, in your business? Right. Right. But it's all about helping that person. I think that's a great idea. I think when you when you talk about how wonderful they are and how the, how wonderful they can be, and, and you go over those pain points, and then you go over you know what you could do for that person, you know, like you know, or just like just like you were saying, you know, you go over the pain points, and then you kind of leave it open to them you with a suggestion, and then you you know maybe you have that landing page. Is that what kind of what you're trying to get across, you know? Then they can go to the landing page to learn more. But I kind of take it a lot of times a step further, like in these quick connects, right? I'll I'll say, I you know, I like to help small businesses. I want to help a thousand small businesses in the next 10 years. Do you know anybody that could use some marketing help? Oh, I like that. And a lot of times, you know, they'll either refer people or they'll say, wait a minute, I could use some help too. You know, what can Mm. you do for me? But I'm not asking them. And in these smart connects next week, I could be in that same seven minutes with that person. Mm -hmm. So I don't want that next seven minutes to be totally awkward because I said no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's and you're going to run into that person. If you're a local business, you go down to the grocery store, you you could run into that person again. You know, it gets up. But if you're just telling them that you like to help and do they know of anybody else that you could help? Right. No pressure. They can say no without. Yeah. Word. No, I think that's a great idea. I think that's a great idea. And, and, you know, I, I think it's, it's really how you, how you word it. And it's not like you kind of leave it up to them. You're not like pushing them and you're just kind of opening up options. It seems like that. That's a very beneficial way. Yeah. And I tell people that, okay, you know, go back to your, for the quickest money, go back to your past customers and let them know what you're doing. Yeah. And 
I said, you know, I'm, I'll be glad to, you know, we've only got five minutes left. You know, it's, I'll be glad to set up a one-on-one -on -one with you. And here's right. I'll mention my calendar if you want to get some other ideas. I like that. I like that a lot. If they don't jump on my calendar. Okay, that's fine. I'll see them again. Right. Exactly. Exactly. One, one person I saw like five times before we got together. <laughs> Right. And that happens, I think, a lot. Yeah, it's um, you have to have patience. And sometimes small businesses, when they're starting out, they don't have the patience because they need money today. Yeah. And that's a really hard dilemma because the harder you push, the less likely you're going to get that sale. Right. So I, I feel for the small businesses, I was fortunate that I could take my five years off and have my software company pay my bills while I right. was going off running around. But um, not everybody has that luxury, but I, yeah. my home business, I raise kids and puppies and all that. It just, I had some, you know, and I always talk about referrals and I think this is really important because you can have a one-time sale Mm -hmm. If you get a hundred dollars a month from a customer and you keep that customer for 10 years, right? A hundred of those customers, you got a million dollars. It's not, yeah. it's not that one time, $100 sale. Right. So I tell people to treat each person as a, um, it's a long-term sale. It costs five, 10 times more to get a new customer than it does to keep an old one happy. So right. take 20% of your budget and keep those people happy. Right. So with my software business, I didn't have to market for 20 years because I had residual income paying my bills. Right. Oh, so that's nice. Think about if you don't have to have a marketing budget. Yeah. Oh, you save so much money. Oh my goodness. So it's... So, I, yeah, I look back in it and think about how you can make each customer, you know, that's why I said with real estate stuck out because real estate agents, well, they're not going to buy a house for another five years, but friends of them are going to ask, do you know a real estate agent over the next five years? Yeah. <laughs> and all it does is take one sale to to pay for that. Exactly. Exactly. Now you offer programs, you said on your website, and you have different options that you, you can uh, do to help people. Can you tell us a little about that? Well, programs such as there's over 50 to 70 different local search directories that you want to get into. Google verifies you. And I sell that separately for $75 a month, Okay, which is better than going into 50 and updating them every month. Right. You know, the hours it takes. I have lead generations machines um, that will help fill your sales funnel. I can do that on a one by one case basis. I sell press releases. What's really nice about press releases is if, like, I sent one out for a speaker who's promoting his book, and we got into 580 media directories. Oh, wow. And what they do is inside the press release is a link back to their website. So mm -hmm. now you're getting all kinds of authority sites, NBC News pointing back to your website, which yeah. helps in your ranking. So I right. see those at, uh, we're selling them now uh, for just $500, a press release. Oh, wow. Okay, so that's that, great. Yeah, that's really good. And then we have... Um, Geofencing. I'm not sure you mu know much about geofencing. It's fairly I've heard of it, but I, I don't know a lot about it. So what happens is you can geofence, put an invisible fence around um, McDonald's, right? Mm -hmm. I, I shouldn't use names, but mm -hmm. as somebody walks into McDonald's, the geofence picks up their information off their cell phone. Wow. And then sends them a coupon for Wendy's that's down the road. <laughs> <laughs> so geofencing, you know, if, if you're selling health supplies, right, 
you can geofence a vitamin store and you're going to get oh, a wow. list of all people that are walking into a vitamin store. You would th- make the assumption that they want to be healthy, right? Right. So you can send them a text, them a coupon, but they also have banner ads so they can get pop-up ads on your computer. Mm. You go into a beauty, into a vitamin store and all of a sudden you're getting pop-up banner ads for vitamins. And oh wow. And you wonder how Google knows that. Well, that's geofencing. Ah, I always wonder why. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now I know. So it's you know, and it's not that expensive. It depends on your return. You know, it always yeah. depends on if you're selling a twenty dollar ebook. Mm-hmm. How much can you spend? Or if I spend a thousand dollars, I need to send sell 50 of them, right? Can I sell right. 50 with my geofencing? Right. You, you have to look at that. If in my case, my high ticket is, you know, between between three and five thousand a month if I do everything for them. But, right. So I can invest, afford to invest two thousand dollars because I need one sale. Right. Mm-hmm. Hey, see, so look at you look at that, and if I get one sale, I can get for three thousand dollars. I can spend two thousand a month if that customer stays with me for three months. Right, right, right. So you got to look at how much because it's not really the first sale; it's sale each month on top of the new sale each month. Right, right. Makes sense. So it, it really depends on how you want to approach it and what tools you want to use, mm-hmm. packages, you know, and I'm always open for a no charge, you know, let's, let's get on. I talked to a lady this morning that didn't have any money, you know, and she needs sales tomorrow, but she really didn't have a clear picture of what she was selling. So okay. I at least helped her out with that. Right. Cause she, I look at her website and it says one thing she goes, no, I really want to sell this. And, you know, it was like five clicks down into the website where I could yeah, you know, mention of it. Right. So we talked about that, but I'm always ha- happy to help, you know, do that. And like I said, I know a lot of financial planners. I know business planners. Um, I know right. people that um, specialize in giving money for startups. So oh, wow. it, I have really a a lot of connections and I, I like to do referrals. So if you have something that um you want to work on a referral basis, so you send me two customers and I send you one or whatever it works out to be. Right. Yeah. I work with people like that all the time too. That's awesome. That's awesome. Where can people find your website? My website is dmaworld.com. Okay. And then um, I have a September. Uh oh. I should know this, shouldn't I? <laughs> September 29th at two o'clock, I think. Two o'clock, I have a free marketing workshop where I spend an hour talking about marketing and all the pieces of it. Yeah. And then if you um want to come into my weekly marketing class, you know, I'll offer mm-hmm. everybody a special deal. Right. But you're all welcome to come and learn everything that you want. And if nothing else, you can learn what questions to ask before you go and get marketing. Right. Because the more you know, mm-hmm. the more better questions you can ask. Like the guy that was selling, managing Facebook marketing ads, it took me only 15 minutes to learn that he was just selling mar- man- Facebook ad management. But, you know, five years ago, probably taking me a couple hours, but so I'm getting right. better. I like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's great. So, so people can go out on your website and you'll have all the, all the different, um, uh services that you offer and you'll also have the information about the upcoming event that you're going to be sponsoring 
Well, to sign up for the upcoming event, it's it's a landing page called 30waystomarket.com. Okay. And that's the best place to sign up. And on my website is my email address. You know, send me an email. Mm-hmm. I had to go back and forth. You know, we, we emailed before we met for a while. So, you know, it's right. something. I always answer my emails. That's yeah. awesome. I think... I think uh, I think that class was, will be very beneficial. Just just to put marketing in in its space, you know, instead of being this evil necessity, you know, yeah. at least put it in place to how you can take advantage of it or not. Exactly, and I, I think too, like society has changed so much, the marketing has changed as well, and people have to understand what works now, what doesn't work now. Because I do see, I see, see businesses still market the way things were done 10 years ago, but it's not like that anymore. So really people un- need to understand, I think too, what works and what doesn't work. Yeah, I've had, I've talked to people that have been afraid to take out their yellow page ad they're paying 1500 a month for because <laughs> it's always worked it for the last 20 years. Yeah. But- yeah, things change and you want to be up with it. You want to know who you're talking to and what triggers them. Yeah, for sure. For sure. But the one thing I have to mention is um, this marketing company, half of the money from this marketing company is going to my animal conservation area that I am going to start as soon as my marketing company is ready. I want to retire in the middle of animals. So that's, that. that's my dream. Oh, I love that so much. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, before we go, can you just say, tell us again, those two websites. So I want to make sure everybody remembers the the, the class that you're launching in, uh, in uh, that's coming up and your website so that they can go to it. Yeah, the first one, the landing page is 30waystomarket.com. And my website is DMA world.com um you find that there's it's a little bit out of date like the cobbler shoes but um mm-hmm. new products are coming out all the time i probably spend 10 to 12 hours a week just keeping up with new things that are coming out and you have right. to, you know because otherwise you're saying something that oh that was so last year or last month or whatever right exactly exactly that's awesome. And is, are there any tips that you want to give anybody before we go? Anything beneficial that comes to mind that you'd like to tell uh, our listeners? Just, you know, go go off for a weekend and, and think about who your ideal customer is, where you can find them, and mm-hmm. what makes you happy in your business. You know, just, right. you know, go to a cabin out in the mountains or the beach, wherever you work best, and right. get rid of all those distractions. And dream, make your dream world because when you're making decisions during a busy day, if it doesn't move the needle towards your dream, yeah, then it's just a distraction. It's going to take you longer to get there. Exactly. Exactly. That's great advice. Well, Mark, this has been a pleasure. You have been a whirlwind of information and and. This has been amazing. And I love the services that you offer. They seem really beneficial. They seem cost efficient. And I'm so glad you came on to share about all these different tools that you have and how people could actually dive deeper into it by just contacting you. And, um, you know, thank you so much for, you know, taking this time out to share with us all this valuable information. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, you're very welcome. Have a great day, Mark. You too, ma'am.